The world has changed. One year ago, the events known prevailingly as the decimation ravaged the mountainside capital of Bulwark, and in its wake, the people of the once stalwart city attempt to rebuild their lives in this new, grim reality. The common folk widely speculate on the cause, with no answers or calling words from the new governing body. Only the highest of the hierarchy know the true source of destruction, while other lower cogs in the military machine know edited and redacted versions of the truth. The birds of prey, being one such group, know only that a great power awoke from within the mountain and laid waste to the city. Since that day, the unofficial team have completely completed several operations in hope of bringing a small fragment of light to the darkness of Bulwark. These are their stories. This is Birds of Prey Special Forces. Hello, and welcome to Another Path. My name is Ryan, and I'll be your GM. This is the next episode in our side quest featuring the Birds of Prey. This episode was recorded live and in person back on New Year's Day, and we're very excited for you to hear the next part of our story. Shout out to Zach for continuing to edit the Birds episodes. A thank you also goes out to our Patreon backers, Zan, Carlin, and Atan for their support. Check us out over at anotherpathpodcast.com for our Patreon as well as our merch store. There's this really awesome Birds of Prey shirt that Chase designed, and I highly, highly recommend it. We pick up right where we left off. The birds have arrived at the town of Linden during candle nights, bringing important medicine to the physician. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the second part of Birds of Prey 3, A Candle Night's Carol. So we're headed to try to find the position when we go that way. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right. Who's carrying the box? All right, Ragnar. Um, Ragno. Rag, yes. Ragna, you feel uh, the box begin to heat up a little bit more as you turn onto the the street you were pointed towards. I I, I like bring back around. Mm-hmm. Let it take a few more steps back. You, you step backwards and it cools down a little bit. Take a couple steps forward, it heats up. Yeah. Are you yep. okay? It is exactly what you think it is. And, and, and I just sort of follow it. <laughs> you hold that box out in front of you and follow the box. Uh, yeah. and That's my favorite sound effect in D&D is someone in armor <laughs> running. <laughs> uh, and you go and you as you as every time you pass a house, you stop and turn towards the door and it gets a little cold and you keep going. Um, and eventually you, you stop at a... Uh, particularly dilapidated looking structure and you turn towards the door uh, and the box heats up even a little more. I believe this is the place where the box is. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your box. Listen to your box. Um, you knock on the door and you hear a voice say, hold on, I'm coming. And you hear a latch in the door. Uh, swings open part way, and then you hear a, someone kind of shoulder check it the rest of the way open and force the door open the rest of the way. And in front of you stands a very old looking elf. Hello! Are you all? Aha! And he looks at the, the box. I you see. Would be the physician. I am I the physician. And you see him. He's, he's dressed pretty plainly, actually. He does have something of, of a physician's coat that looks like it's seen better days. But he does have, like, this stethoscope around his neck. And behind him, you can see the bag on the floor. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm the physician. Uh, the colonel sent you. Mm-hmm. Yes. We are the, uh, birds of prey. Welcome, birds. Come on in. Come on in. And you all, you all. Hey, come on in. Yeah, you all enter the house. Uh, it is a small home, lived in but loved. There's a small fire going with what looks like a very small candle night's chicken being cooked. You see the, the mother toiling over some soup. You see a couple of kids running around finishing their last last little bit of wrapping of whatever small knickknacks they may have come up with. And you see uh, in front of you a small man who is uh, slightly green, but that's just his skin texture. And the physician says, Come on in, birds. I'd like to introduce you. Uh, this is Bob Cratchit. <laughs> oh, no. 
I need the medicine for his son, Tim. <laughs> oh boy. I, 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 I hold it close and I go, surely you, you know that we are cautious. <laughs> Clearly you'd see. Obviously you'd succumb to a little uh, test of your honesty. I don't know what this voice is. There we go. Now I'm there. Sure, I can understand that. Can I check the timer first? I turn it. Okay. Yes, we have time for this. Cool. I'm a medallion again. Okay. So uh, I, I can hit him up. And, okay. Oh, so, I, yes. you, you, okay. So I mean, you, he knows it's happening. Yeah, you, 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 so you, you look at him and you medallion his sure. thoughts and you're going to probe? Yeah. So we'll start surface Let's thoughts. See that if, if he is in fact him and not sure. a charlatan. Um. He is surface thoughts. He is grateful that you are here. He is happy that the, the medicine is here and that he can help this small sick boy. As you probe a little bit deeper, you see images of he's been here before. You can see him doing other doctorly type things around the town with other sick people. He seems to be exactly who he comes to be. He's clean. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I hold the thing up. Well, God, I would hope so. Um, so he, he takes the, the package and sets it down and takes out a small knife and cuts his hand open and puts it on the package and you guys hear the locks I, click. You know if you use your arm it works just as well and you don't, don't, listen, to, like, don't listen to her. It's, it's okay. Perfectly I've got fine. bandages. It's kind of what I do. Alright. Fine. See? It's fine. You two, you two worry too much. He, yes. <laughs> he takes the... the he, he opens it and pulls out what looks like a... It just looks like a, a large potion bottle. Uh, made of a thick material, and inside is some some bluish, reddish, almost sparkling liquid swirling. Um, and he takes it very carefully and sets it on the table and begins doling out like different doses uh, for this very young child who is very, very sick. Would you say and very small that he's tiny? I might say that he is a tiny Tim type. Uh, I'm tiny, tiny, tiny. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, you got there, girl? I'm kidding. <laughs> Although I did do a panic Google just to make sure I was on the right track as okay. soon as I heard Cratchit. Oh, it was good. like, this is Christmas Carol, right? Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's a candle night Carol. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> a candle night Margaret. Instead of Carol. Just instead of Carol. Instead uh-huh. of Carol. Okay. Oh, I. Good. I thought you were I gonna... get it. I don't. I'm, I don't. I, I'm <laughs> gay. I don't like it. I, I get, get it. it. It's a candle night, Karen. There we go. That's it's it's candle nights, comma Karen. <laughs> uh, um. Nice. Rip. Crack it. Crack that one. <laughs> what are we? Um. The family invites you in, uh, and Bob. Um, um, and I want I want it noted that I tried to figure out if I could do the current voice and I cannot. No. So I'm not going to do it. But I want you all to know I worked on it. I, I attempted. I, I believe you and I appreciate the effort <laughs> to emulate the best Bob Cratchit. Um, but uh, he comes, he invites you all in. He says, "Yeah, come on in, come on in. Uh, happy candle nights. So won't you uh, stay for dinner at the very least?" Um. I look at that chicken. There's not enough there. No, there's no. not. It's quite all. Right. It's quite all right. We'll be uh, taking our oh. leave here pretty soon. We've got a room just up the road here. It'll be just fine. Send it with your loved ones. Boy, gonna be all right. You don't need an insight check as yeah. you you watch his face become brave. I don't know, but this is more hope than we've had in a good long time. How much money would you say that we have right now? I, How, I, however much you brought with you, moderate amount. You would have however much you brought with my, you. My inventory has seven gold, right? Now. Okay, I would. <laughs> I would assume at this point the birds have back in Bulwark. The birds have access to funding. Okay. Yeah. So I would say that whatever a whatever whatever amount of gold you would have put on your person to bring with right. you is what you have within reason. Right. I think fifty gold, probably. Sure. Fifty, a hundred, maybe if you feel like Ragnar probably brought more just in case. Yeah, yep. I'm Barra doesn't think that far ahead. Fifty was more than enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I mentally equivalent like a gold to ten bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, yeah. five hundred bucks. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's actually more like one gold is just federal minimum wage, seven twenty five. So, but yeah. Yeah, no, Ragnar like looks around the place, 
and like just like walks out. <laughs> but in, in the the side story goes and like buys food and shit and yeah. like brings groceries back. <laughs> um. So you all are not staying. No, we're uh, we'll take our leave. Don't you worry about that. We we'll we'll be just fine. We'll have a a fine time tonight. Spend it with your family. That's that's what's important for you right now. Oh, oh. we all right. If you're, I will, I if will, you're if you're sure, I will lean in nice and close and just like we lost daughters during the situation. We are each other's family now. Um, Bob just looks actually is like eye to eye at you. Mm-hmm. At really, I'm just kind of like, cautiously, but yeah. puts his hand on your shoulder and just thank you. Of course, thank you. We'll be uh, just up the road, I think. If you need anything, let us know. All right. All right. And you can hear it on the tip of his tongue, but he doesn't say anything. That helps them if they don't ask. Um, uh, the physician is still doling out the medicine and overhears part of this and says, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. You're a, you're a well-connected doctor for being this all this way out here. When you've lived as long as I have. Well, you know, that's people fair. owe you. Yeah, all right. Right. Well, uh, we got, uh, lodgings up the street here. If there's anything else we could be doing, let us know. We'll be, uh, here for a day or so at least. We got a, it's a long walk back. Sure. We won't be far. Right. Um, see you all leave the, the Cratchit as, home. Uh, as I we will... leave, I'm assuming they've got like a mailbox or something. Sure. I tossed 10 gold in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I had already left. I, went, I go and I, I buy like an assortment of, of foods. And then, like, come back and, like, leave on the doorstep and knock the door. And... <laughs> <laughs> I will very briefly control flames just to give their hearth a bit more uh, heat. Just, okay. just to Great. warm up the place a little bit more. You all um, head... Toss a little firebolt in there. Yeah, you all head <laughs> head back and try to find uh, uh, try to find the whatever inn you think you're staying at yeah. uh, that you've, you've told these people you're staying at. Yeah. Uh, night has clearly fallen at this point, and it's getting on in the evening. Everyone, make a perception check. Fifteen. Eighteen. Thirteen. Okay, you all hear the sound of chains. No. What? Coming from down the alley. I thought I left, the I alley, dark vision. The alley you have just passed, and you I all hear chains walking down the alley. I do that thing where I just kind of lean back and it's like, what, what do I see? You you lean back and you stare into the alley and you see darkness. You see darkness. With my umbral sight, which allows me to penetrate magical darkness. Can I see anything? You see darkness. <gasps> oh, I'm intrigued. Do you head down the alley? Uh... Pardon me, who is shaking those? And I start walking down the, <laughs> the, the alley. <laughs> you walk down the alley Ragna. into darkness. Ragna, no fear, Suthrasis. Mm-hmm. And the two of you brief, the Anvera and Bilga, watch Ragna disappear. You're going to cause a disturbance. Excellent. I'm going. <sighs> I, I must know more about this magical darkness. I just, I just I wanted to it. have some goose. As you all walk into the darkness, you feel a slight tremor as... You cross into something. And in front of you, you see a pale, translucent man. He wears a heavy coat wrapped tightly around him and a great chain that fans out into the snow and into the darkness and seemingly disappears. He slowly raises his gaze from the ground until your eyes meet. <laughs> I am just like away from himself. You have done a great thing this night, but more is needed. So much more before the night is done. You will hear church bells toll. Bong. 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 It continues. My name was Jacob Marley. <laughs> oh, Christmas Carol's public domain. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's why it's, we, it's, why it's, we can use the yeah, yeah, yeah. name. <laughs> and also, isn't this isn't this low key sponsored? This is low key sponsored, guys. Yeah, low key sponsored um, by 
Verge Games. Whoa. Hey. Yeah. Uh, but that, that that Kickstarter you've definitely like seen that being That Kickstarter uh, that you definitely saw get advertised that made like fifty grand or something like that. Yeah. This We're is like hi, run this thing. Um well I contacted them, was like, Hi, I'd like to run your thing and they were like, Yes, please, run this thing. Um so some changes have been made to fit it into our world. Of course. Of course. Um, right. Natch but, natch. Yeah. So uh and uh I'll I'll talk about Sure, sure, sure. During, yeah, yeah. during the other things, and we can all talk about yeah. that later. But it's 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 rad. It's cool. It's real, it's real cool. Um. <laughs> I knew Ebenezer Scrooge in life. Who are they talking about? Lord Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> the tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge, mayor of this poor Linden. Oh, Linden. See, I was guessing it was going to be some sort of London thing. Someone from a uh, uh, Linden cold voice. <laughs> also a hot post. Oh, In yeah. life, we were partners, and we committed every misbegotten act of greed and malice as recompense. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link, yard by yard. Just give it like the most extreme side eye to our Yeah, no, I think all, all like, three of us like, are standing like parallel, like just like in a line, just like what? So confused. What the fuck? It is too late for me, but not for him. He has prepared for many years to slip the noose of old age and become immortal. He w- is wait, a what? wizard of some renown. <laughs> oh no! Split <laughs> Scrooge! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh man. So, to do so will cost both his soul and the town of Linden. Far more than the simple change that binds me. Yet there is still a chance. Chance, chance. Tonight, Scrooge will be visited upon by three spirits. Is that us? <laughs> <In general. laughs> I'm trying to get a little tremolo yeah. going. <laughs> God, this sucks. This is why I re- <laughs> this is why I cared about the microphone. <laughs> have fun editing this uh, for his sake he must hear what they have to say but there are dark creatures who want to claim Scrooge's soul and control him in his twisted afterlife if left to their own devices they will undo all of the spirit's work you must find your way to Scrooge's bedchamber before the final stroke of midnight there you will encounter the spirits and must push back whatever foul beings show themselves. This is the only hope left for Scrooge and Linda. And you watch the ghost disappear and the blackness fade around you and you're standing in an alleyway and behind you you hear the church bells continue to toll. Ten. Eleven. How is this always our job? Did we just take drugs? No, I, uh, the, I've i only taken the drugs once, and Do you things think... look a lot brighter and uh, and uh, what the luminescent. F- what the fuck? Do you think perhaps there was something in that margarita mix? Like, <sighs> you, you know how they say if you take acid, it can linger in your bones until you crack your back, and then suddenly, wham, it hits you? What? <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Like, do you watch uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp 2? Well, I mean, it, it, there's the the bit where Stan Lee's like going to open his car and then his car shrinks, and he's like, "The seventies were fun, but now I'm paying for it." <laughs> That's the bit. It's because the theater, like, if you take acid, like, it stays okay. in like your marrow, and so like if you like crack your uh, back, you could be like, "Shit." Okay, whatever. <laughs> Message uh. delivered. Jacob Marley fades away, and the eleventh church bell chimes. And the heroes have one hour to reach Scrooge's bedchamber. You all turn. And look, that manor is not close. All right, let's get the let's get. Hu- I'm gonna go get Hubert, I guess. And the timer starts. 
Go. Okay. What the fuck? Run. I don't think the it would be... Of, birds of prey make their way through the streets, street by street, pushing through the fallen snow. Everyone make an acrobatics or an athletics. Because we move into skill challenge I'm territory. I'm a sorcerer! It's a 25 for Ugh. athletics. 25 for athletics. You are moving through the streets in the snow, no problems. You're busting through snow drifts. Big eight. Big eight. You are falling into snow drifts. Sure Fourteen. Am. Fourteen. You uh you do a cool jump off of a building to jump over Bilga who is in a snow drift. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Ah. Uh, you see Bilga like I'm not feet for this. feet going, hanging into this snow drift. It's a very sad, frosty situation. Can I, can I pop a burning hands to like help? Absolutely. Give Absolutely. Myself, <laughs> give myself advantage. You sure? Yeah. Love you it. pop burning hands. The boots. snow begins to melt around oh, you. Oh, you can yeah, boots I'm an around idiot. things. I have fucking flying boots. Okay. Oh, yeah, you should use yeah, that. yeah. You should use those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have boots of striding and spring, so I can jump real high. I got them ups. You got them ups. Okay. I'm still slow, but I have flying boots. Yes. Yeah, so you can fly <laughs> maneuver. Uh, well, yeah, but you can go as the crow flies. You can maneuver in three dimensional space. <laughs> as you all then uh, make your way through the streets and you get to the base of the hill where the manor is and you look up and up and up and it's up there um, there's a, a, a very icy looking switchback on the way up and as you near the hill a wall of ice sits in your way a horse drawn coach sits at the base of the hill the empty harness is hanging frozen in the air Ice has flowed over it, leaving a small mountain of blue pooling in the middle of the street. How do you get past it? Uh, one, one more game? <laughs> There's an ice, a wall of ice uh-huh. blocking the path, uh, uh, the, bl- blocking the path up the hill. The hill uh, has a single path up, and it curves around a lot, and it's very icy. And as the higher and higher you go, the path is very uh, sheer on either side. If you slip, you will fall. This time, this time I will use burning hands. Okay. To to at least melt to melt the ice. The ice okay, you melt. You go step. You stop and you burning yeah. hands, and it takes you some time. Yeah. I'll but, spend that spell slot. But the ice is melted. Part of the coach melts with it, and you make you're able to make your way through past obstacle number one. Nice. You move farther up the hill, pulling yourself up the the massive ice. You look down the first stretch of street, and it is mercifully smooth. You head farther, but you hear a crunching sound from the roof of a closed shop. I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw for an avalanche. Oh. Whoa, no. Oh. oh on the table. Natural one. Oh, natural one. Natural one. <laughs> no. 22. 22. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a four for me. I get the old dice today. <laughs> Boy. Um, well, that is going to be 12 damage. Oh, there goes that. Damage. If you oh, yeah. fail, half if you pass. So six damage to the monk there. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean. uh, as you Thanks, look, James. Um, and Barra, make an investigation check. All right, but I am bad at those. Okay. Uh, well, it could be a perception, I guess. I'm kind of loosey goosey with those for That's this. Ten. Ten. Okay. Um. Yeah, you the you look up at the roof that they all felt that the snow all and ice all fell off of covering you and burying you. Uh, you were able to dodge out of a good amount of it, but the there doesn't appear to have been any cause for it. But it all, all appears to have come down very straight and directly on you. Hmm. And you move on. As you start yeah, up, lady, the, someone doesn't want us up there. As you start up the next street, you notice a small gap, a small alleyway that looks like it could be a shortcut up. You'll get there faster. But it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Dangerous. You take the shortcut. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. You take the shortcut. Gots okay. To. You got to. You head into the alley, hoping for a shortcut. Not even halfway up the steps, you see three silhouettes appear ahead of you, outlined by the dim light reflected off the snow. The largest and most cantankerous one waves a knife, growling, "Oh, you're going to your life!" And you see a couple of thugs. That's oh, a- hello, darlings. Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fireball? Ball. Oh, shit. Uh, that's going to be three big fails. All right. That, there's extra. Roll there's them. Extraneous. Roll and then there's dice. Bilka. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
14, 16, uh, 20 points of fire damage. Did they all die? They're all dead. <laughs> oh, I had, I had a good bit, too. That is not that. how that was intended to go. Oops. <laughs> they are all very dead. Your money or your life. Fireball. <laughs> No, you. <laughs> um, See, yeah, I, you for... do. So you do kill. You do kill these three souls, uh, and you do uh, remove all of the snow in the area. Um, and uh, the building that w- on the side that you were uh, shortcutting around is now falling down. <laughs> but you continue up. You've been given a quest. You've been given a mission. You must reach your goal. Look, Who knows? Cut. We are not a zero collateral damage oh situation. <laughs> they heard about the Harvest Festival. The city of Bulwark will reimburse Linden, all right? We have things to do. Jolly Linden I, town. I just, Jolly. I really, I really appreciate Bilga after, like, the last magic character I played was, you know, full support wizard. Yeah. I was like, hmm, yeah, I can just fucking fireball things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, my bit was if they would have survived, I would have been gone. I have a toll for you, and done am totally dead. Ah, which no, was, which that would have been, been very good. Dead. Yes, uh, we'll put that in the Patreon content. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> As you move slowly up the frozen road, you near the summit. You reach the last of the switchbacks. The smooth surface gives way to a chaotic mess of ice. What is a switchback? Uh, hey. Goes back and forth up a. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. like like you see in like San Francisco. Exactly. Lot. Yes, gotcha. and then it's real steep down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's turned into a chaotic mess of ice. I need everyone to make an acrobatics check as you run, 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 hit the ice. Can you skate your way across? Fifteen. Can I argue to use athletics because I can jump over most of these? Sure. Yeah, you can use athletics with, with, with my crazy you just jumping. Fly? Boots. Yeah. How yeah. many flying uses do you have? I, it's like twelve hours or something. Oh Can't shit! Really? So you could just use it however much you want, basically. Yeah. Let's okay. See. So you just fly over That's the thing. thing. I'm just jumping. Okay. up The switchbacks, like like the, <laughs> the paths. You're jumping. Uh, Path to path. Yeah. Just, just path to path. Instead of going all the way around, dude, yeah, just cut. So I can middle. use the boost to fly for up to four hours all at once or in several shorter flights. Perfect. So you Each just fly right, right over this. One minute from so the you can just fly right over this and it's perfect. All right. Uh, and you get to the other side and stop. Yeah. Basically. Uh, and Barra? Mm hmm. Uh, 15. 15? Yeah. You do a triple Lutz. <laughs> do, do you do like the, the gymnast, like, lands and then arms in the air? Auburn hair fluttering in the breeze. <laughs> oh, Barra gets the goal! <laughs> I might have illusion a nine. As you haul yourself up the final stretch to the top of the hill, the ice abruptly gives way to paved stone again. Nice. Standing before you and surrounding the manor is a ten-foot stone wall half frozen from the bitter wind. You can see the stone path leading up to the front door through the large closed iron gate set into the wall. Next to the gate is a single barred and shuttered window cut into the stone, and you can see candlelight streaming out from between the cracks. How are you going to get over this wall? Fireball. <laughs> no. I'm, kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. How tall is the wall? <laughs> ten foot. It's ten feet? Yeah. Cover right. nice. Oh, oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to just, it's going to be guy, real like, hard to climb. Like, do a, I mean, it's only ten feet up, but I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a super cool jump. Do a, you're gonna super cool and, and Yeah, I, I get up and like, I, like my feet, I, yeah. come, my feet come up. I plant like the one hand on the top of the wall and try to like do like a cool roll out of it. Okay. I'll have a couple, couple fire bolts, bolts, fire bolts, not balls. That's the ice to like try to melt some areas to give Unbera some like footholds. Yeah. Cool. Make or, make it. Can I just run in the back? I'm not that strong. Okay, <laughs> and you're kind of you're you're a lot. There's a lot of muscle on you. I Dwar- Dwar- hey, is that what the thing like dwarves are short, but they have around the same body mass as like humans yeah. do. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, make a uh, ranged spell attack just to see if you can. Uh, yeah, twenty three. Twenty three. Cool. They you are you space them out. Uh, and Barra size distance. Uh, and Barra, go ahead and make uh, acrobatics with advantage. Okay. Thanks to these handholds. Okay. And Bilga flies over. Uh, that's going to be a fourteen. A fourteen. Okay. Uh, Ragna, make an athletics check for jumping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a, a eleven. An eleven. Okay. You hit the. So it's kind of funny because it happens at the same time. Bilga, you fly up and over, and you 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 land on the other side, and you turn back around, and you look up, um, just in time to watch. Um, almost in unison, <laughs> and Barra and Ragna hit the top, and Barra. 
um, and Bear's hands hit the top, and she pulls herself over, and Ragna jumps, and just like ten foot straight up, it's impressive, and hits the top of the wall. Um, ten foot vertical leap, <laughs> but does in fact land with one foot square on Anne Bear's hand, and they both oh. have hit the top of the wall and are clear, and then they both fall over the wall. <laughs> No, <sighs> motherfucker! I'm sorry. Uh, I will stand on the top of the wall with my flight, taking a single point of snow bludgeoning damage as you hit <laughs> on the inside of the manor. Oh, uh, oh! So we fall the you other fall side. Okay, cool. the oh, correct okay. way. Okay, okay. We right. are all in now. I now have to make Who a what? shit. Check. Okay, uh, um, you all hit the ground and all freeze in place. Clang. And hear no movement from the guardhouse. Okay. In front of uh, this isn't my strong suit. Everyone makes stealth checks. Oh, no. Just it's something I'm trained in, but my dex is still zero. Disadvantage. So. I rolled two threes, so that's six. Well, I also rolled a three. It's also six. <laughs> Fifteen. Cool. Y'all loud motherfuckers. I'm not though. I just suck. <laughs> I just I have I, bad I, stats. <laughs> I go Fifteen to, is respectable. There's a there's a very good bit in the animated How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the new one, wherein they are all walking through the snow. Oh, like, crunch, crunch, crunch. This is the loudest snow I've ever heard. Crunch, <laughs> crunch, crunch. And then they uh, the shot flips away, and then it comes back to him, and all of a sudden it's silent. The snow a, doesn't make any more noise. For a moment, I was I was about to ask, why are you watching the new? Cr- oh, right, you have a child. I have a child. Two. Two. two of them you have actually. Two childs. Yes, um, and a wife that teaches six, and a wife that teaches uh, six-year-olds. So, you know, she had to watch this That's with fair. them, yeah. and then subjected me to it. I uh-huh. love you. <laughs> <laughs> How is Benedict? Um, unrecognizable. Oh, 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 in a good way. I like it when he disappears into a role. But like Schmaug. It's no Jim Carrey. That's fair. Jared, Jody, Jared, Jody, Jared, Jody, Jody Blacks. It's a perfection notice. Um, also, uh, that movie's 19 years old. Oh, man. Uh, Found that out. Woof. We keep playing D&D, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without buildings to buffer it, the bitter wind cuts through you as Scrooge's manor looms above. Three stories of imposing stone and iron rest on the hill, towering over everything for miles. It is a grand building, but you cannot help but notice that it seems to be in disrepair. Shingles missing, more than one window is boarded up. The only light from the manor is a soft glow from the third floor window. You move to the front door, and uh, it is surprisingly unlocked. It is very heavy, though. You're able to push it open. The real loud... (laughs) There it is. That's That's it, thank you. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, I've been doing a door opening for a lot of games. (laughs) Your steps echo on the hard stone floor of the entry hall as you finally leave behind the cold air. Each sound you make is rebuked by the silence that hangs in the air and hovers over the warm carpet and old curtains. It feels as real as the dust that sits on the empty pedestals and unlit lamps and reaches up the pillars that stretch above you, disappearing into the shadows. It creeps up the twin staircases, curling along the far side of the room and languishes on the balcony. And in this silence... You hear the church bell. Bong. Bong. Well, we're here, right? Right. I, we, I think we should go upstairs, though. Let's go. I mean, wait. Doesn't the first ghost hit when the bell tolls one? Bong. Isn't that what the blue guy says? <laughs> Expect the first ghost when the bell tolls one. That's not what this... That's, <laughs> that's not what this Marley said. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I, I, this Marley said, be in Scrooge's room by midnight. Okay, fair... I just take every opportunity I can to quote Muppet, Muppet Christmas Carol as part of why my wife married me. Trust this. Trust me. This is all I've been doing all day. I know. All right. Is okay. writing Muppet Christmas Carol into this script. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Actually, I'm the birds. You're the fast one. Hilarious. The birds. I, weirdly, the birds the charge up the stairs one flight at a time. The bells continuing to sound behind them. We hear nine. Ten, the the birds throw themselves at the door to Scrooge's room and find it locked. Fireball. Ten. <laughs> uh, 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 athletics to bust it open. You, all right, you're gonna bust open the door, make an athletics check. 
Bust it down. Seventeen. All right, you bust the door down. Bust it makes us feel good. You 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 bust the door down. Eleven. And Bera and Bilga and Ragna fall into the room too too late to realize that the door opens outward. <laughs> uh, damn. And the final bell tolls. Let's find some ghosts. Poor Lich. The birds look around the room. It is large, but strangely sparse. A single floor poster bed dominates it. Uh, the curtains are drawn. There's a fireplace to the left that still radiates heat from the low embers. You can hear soft breathing coming from the bed itself. The door to the balcony across from the hearth is open despite the cold air. A desk and chair are in the corner, covered in old notes, half-written spells, and a, half, and a partially obscured dark purple book. Possibly the spell book. Lord Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, shit. As you near the bed, you see an old man wearing a nightcap and robes. His medallion of office hanging proudly around his neck. He stares slack-jawed before bolting up and sputtering out a horse. How did you get in here? Door was... Door, we opened the door. <laughs> behind you, the three of you hear from behind you a voice very clearly say, I am the spirit of Candle Night's past. Hello. And the what? three of you turn behind you and see uh, uh, a female ghostly figure a light onto the balcony behind you and step into the room and into Scrooge's bedroom and walk past the three of you and go straight to Lord Scrooge where he sits on his bed. Long, long past? Long past. The spirit reaches out one... <laughs> the spirit reaches out a hand. We must away. There is much work ahead of us this night. Cautiously, Scrooge takes her hand as she leads into the double doors by which she just entered. They open before her, seemingly ignoring the three of you. Alright, what the hell? Uh, are we supposed to help you? I think we're supposed to let those ghosts do the job and keep any other bad ghosts from right. getting to Scrooge. The three of you, um, take it, uh, as you, the three of you kind of take this moment to go, to be like, uh, what, huh, what are we doing? You look down and look around at yourselves, and Bilga accidentally, like, waves her hand, and your hand passes, like, right through the edge of this four-poster bed. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, and... Ghost bed! I try to put my hand into Bilga's face. Oh, God. It feels cold and icky, but you can do it. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, I, oh, I put my hand through a dresser. <laughs> yep. Oh! Please. We're ah. spectral! Please. We're going to full ghost! We're beyond bones now! <laughs> I always knew this is how I would have done. <laughs> I mean, look, we're all going to end up as ghosts one day. Yes, but I, I figured that it would still happen to me when I was mortal. I uh, feel strangely alive. Um, I attempt to <laughs> levitate off the ground? You do so. Oh, no. <laughs> About four and a half inches. <laughs> but it still happens. I try oh. to do it, but I try to do it just a little higher than I'm there. Okay. You succeed. You make it a full five and three quarters. Ha ha. I have flying boots. I go higher than both of you. <laughs> Bilga passes through the ceiling, never to return. Oh, shit. There's, <laughs> Goodbye. There's no height that can escape these better than he's, she's flipping you off. You, behind you, you see the spirit about to leave with Scrooge. What do you do? Uh, follow. I guess we follow. Here's my favorite question. How? I go through the wall. Uh, full bullet. Like hands behind yeah. my back, Superman. Feet, yeah, Superman. Just n not even Superman. Just like just enjoying what breeze I can feel in my incorporeal state. A sentence I did not expect to say at the beginning of this. <laughs> I'm just walking. <laughs> <laughs> Be bopping along. Yeah. Okay. The three of you uh, using oh, wow. your new spectral moving abilities because you're. Ghosts. 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 Now, apparently. Ghosts. Or at the Ghosts. very least, spirits um, Ghosts. fly behind the spirit as she takes Scrooge out through the balcony. And a bright light fills the room as she and Scrooge step, th step through the doors. Following after them, you squint your eyes as they adjust to the harsh light. And as soon as your vision settles, you find yourself standing in a boarding school classroom. A young Ebenezer Scrooge sits in class listening intently to his teacher, who happens to be a blue Aracoma. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. There it God is. damn it, Albrecht. <laughs> there it is. Well done. <sighs> Near the head of the classroom stands the spirit and current Scrooge, who, or, or the Scrooge you know, mutters to himself. I remember this place I used to attend here. Spirit, why have you brought me back to my old school? Do you intend to show me every moment of my wasted youth? Bah humbug. <laughs> there it was. That's the first bah humbug. Yeah. <laughs> the spirit says nothing, and the class gets up to leave. As you watch, young Ebenezer is approached by a tall man with a package. The man's proportions seem ever so slightly off. His arms are too long. His face is too perfect, and somehow he seems uncomfortable in his own skin as if he is more creature than man the creature leans down and whispers to young ebenezer while present day scrooge leans forward straining to hear what do you do i tackle him okay make uh, an athletics nat 20 baby Ooh, nice. you 27 With. i like just spring forward ghostly uh, 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 motion in use and with perfect form perfect tackling form as if to a tackle dummy ragna passes right through the creature uh, with no effect beans um, i walk up and also listen no you all move forward <laughs> and bear and ragna move forward towards this bilgus the first to feel the shift in energy in the room as shadows around the room spring to life surrounding young Ebenezer and the creature. One of the shadows dives toward the creature and disappears. The remaining five sir, silently turn their attention towards the three of you, staring right at you, oh. clearly seeing you. Huh. Look, we're... Roll initiative. <laughs> All right. Doing this, I guess. Seven. Seven for Bilga. Nine. Eight. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, nine for Anbera. Uh-huh. Eight for Ragnar. Eight for Ragnar. Okay. Seven, eight, nine. Huh. All right. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> what was that? That's from Chorus Line. That was Chorus Line. Oh, okay. da, 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 da. I've never seen Chorus Line. <laughs> it's not worth it. Zach, um, Zach doesn't work all the time. Okay. Yeah. But it is five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, y'all at home are missing the choreography, which is not much, but is impressive. We're at a table with singular. microphones in front of us. It is entertaining. God, it's like God. it's like three of us took the same musical theater class. Yep, and one of us was an art major. A different kind of art. Top of the rounds. Um, probably some ghosts. Top of the round, <laughs> it is. There are uh, a total of six of these creatures, and they are simply known as lies. <laughs> the first one, uh, well, there uh, three of them are going to go before any of you. So one's going, one of each is going to go for each of you. So we will start with Bilga. That the first one moves towards you, um, walking. A good six inches off the ground. Cool, cool, cool. It's spectral form billowing around it, and you can't help but feel a strange kinship to these creatures, these dark oh. creatures of shadow. <sighs> it's still going to try to hurt you, though. Yeah. 18 hits you. Oh, yeah. Great. I need you to... No. Okay, so you take... Uh, six points of necrotic damage. Okay. And you are grappled. Okay. Whoa. You are grappled and, and restrained until the grapple ends. That's unfortunate. Now, here's the fun part of this. At least for me. <laughs> we but, all knew what you meant, Ryan. <laughs> at the end of the lie's turn, while you are grappled, your strength score is reduced by 1d4. Whoa. Whoa. Until the grapple ends. Oh. So your strength score is currently reduced by 3. Out of the negatives. Uh, Anbera. An attack on Anbera. Uh, 15? That hits. That hits. Okay. So you are going to take uh, 7 points of necrotic damage. Okay. You are also grappled. Okay. And restrained. And your strength goes down by 2. Okay. And Ragnar. 13 to hit. No. 
does not hit. The spectral energy passes alongside you, and you brush it away, and it cannot touch you. Huh. That takes us to Anbera. Anbera, you are grappled and restrained by a lie. Yeah. All right, I'm going to punch it a lot. Punch it. Punch it real good. Okay. Do your fist count as magical yet? Uh, no, but the Waxwood staff does. Oh, good. And that is a... That counts as a, as a monk weapon for me. Uh, 17? Yes. Okay. Fucking good. Yes. <laughs> your arm strikes are magical now. You're six, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. your, your fists are magic. Okay, cool. Yeah. You have your key. Uh, that is only going to be five, <laughs> and I'm going to expend for a uh, for a flurry of blows. Do it. Fury of do it. Blows. Do the thing. I just do have to look back up flurry of blows because it has been six calendar months since That's I have played true. this character. Um, and if you expend the use from the staff, you make the flurry with the staff. What That's staff? what I'm doing. Yep, I've got three of those. It's just two, I'm not saying it's I'm, two extra attacks. I'm uh, yeah okay thank you because I'm not saying I'm counting on there being uh some booze later on, but I am counting on finding some booze later yeah. on. <laughs> some spectral Scrooge. Ooh, that is a natural twenty. Do it. Uh, so that is going to be uh look here. eight eight. Plus four, so that is going to be an additional 20 damage Okay. for attack two, and attack three is going to be 22. To hit, yep, that hits. And that is going to be a four plus four, so an additional eight. Okay. You, you, you lay into the lie, mm-hmm. even as it is attempting to hold you and speak into your mind. And twist your every desire, but you are able to dispel it, and the lie retreats. Aha! It sinks back into the floor to disappear, and it is gone. Fucking right! Step to the game! Come on now! <laughs> Who's next? I'm feeling squirrely now. There are uh, 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 six appeared in total. Uh, mm-hmm. There was the one that disappeared uh, into the creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the remaining five. So you've so five other ones. So you've gotten rid of one. Yes. Okay. Anything else for your turn? Um, no, nah, that's good. That's good. Okay. That's that, what I got. Wait, all right. Do I have, wait a second. No, I'm sorry. I have another attack. Okay. You're going right. to... So I will go after the one on Bilga. Okay. Go after the one on Bilga. Help. Bilga. Uh, that is going to be a 22. Okay. That'll hit. Uh, 11. 11 damage. It takes it. Cool. It's not happy about it. All right. And that's me. And that's your turn. Okay. Uh, after your turn... Uh, hey, Ragnar, what's your dexterity? Like, just like base? Yeah. My dex is a plus three. Plus three? Okay. Hey, cool. You win the tie. Nice. So you're up next. Oh, rad. Yeah, so it moves to Ragnar. Um, so there's one that is grappling Bilga. There are three more attempting to move... Um, yeah, there are the the one that missed you, and then two more moving in on the three of you, and the one that disappeared. Cool. Um, so uh, I keep an eye on one of the ones I can see that's closest to me. Probably. Sure. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, uh Bilga's grappled. Yes. Yes. yes Bilga's yes. grappled. Yes. I'm gonna get that one. Um, okay, go for it. I put my hand on the 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 hilt of my long sword on my uh my belt as I I draw it just a little um, a little for the moment. My pupil sort of dilate real quick and then and suck back as I whisper a few eldritch words uh, and I'm going to use Hexblade's curse on the lie. Oh, God. The one grappling Bilga? Yes. Great. And I'm going to uh, attack. Do the thing. Um, yes, I draw my blade the rest of the way. The blade giving off a faint mist like um, like ice and warm air and I come charging forward to attack. I'm so pumped for this. I, I missed the general. <laughs> Our what? time together was so brief. I missed you too, Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> that was my impression of the general. I that that was big good. fucking toga wearing devil. <laughs> Demon, excuse me. That devil. Okay. Um, eighteen He's hits. Order. Eighteen hits. Red. The wanderer is chaos. Oh, actually, sorry. No, that's a twenty-one. Because I forgot. Hex blades curse. I have yes, you do. So see, one of these other things is going to go, and then Bulking next. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah, score crill hits on nineteen and twenty. Oh, gotta love that expanded curse yeah. on that person. Right? On a on a rolled nineteen. Yes, on a rolled nineteen and twenty. 
Um, that is going to be four slashing as I two hand grip that bad boy. Um, and then Wait. we're gonna make a second attack. Just four damage. Oh, sorry. Did I say just four? Yeah, so four. Sorry, six plus four is so ten. Oh, I'm there the we worst. Go. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, great. I'm the worst. Okay. Plus, you get bonus damage uh, equal to your proficiency. Do for, I? For Hexblade's Curse, yeah. For Hexblade's Curse, yeah. I don't I was. It, it didn't say that. You sure do, though. You should, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once per short rest is a bonus action, she's one creature you can see within. Two, two, three, three, three. Against the curse, sorry, you gain a plus three yeah. bonus. Oh, bonus to damage rolls. There we go. So, right. how much more damage? Uh, so that would be 13. 13? Yes. 13. Okay. It looks bad. Rad. Second attack. Which I rolled a 7 and then plus a 7, so 14. 14 is a miss. It's a miss. It's AC is 15. Okay. All right. Thank it is see. spectral and ghosty. Yes. So yeah, I make the the one long swipe and I sort of spin and try to uh, uh, cut across myself, uh, like in a nice little sort of cross diagonal. But I, I I miss it and I'm in a cool pose and I re I stand back up and I'm ready for next time. One of the the next lie is going to go for Canberra. Uh-huh. Lie number four. Uh, that's a natural nineteen. Yeah, I'll do it. So that's going to be oh boy. Uh. Ten points of necrotic damage. Ow! And you are grappled mm-hmm. anew, and your strength is now reduced by two. Now, it is important to note, uh, every time... So, the previous creature was gone, so yes. your strength went back. Yes. And now it's it's Perfect. gonna ping pong. Like yeah, right. Song. I am back down to where You're I You're back down. Alright, that takes us to Bilga. Alright. Uh... You are currently grappled by one that does, <gasps> that, that does not look great. Yeah, I'm just gonna put my hands on its face and cast burning hands. Do it. Uh, well, so I mean, that scans. That it makes, works. It makes a dexterity save. Um, thirteen. Uh, it succeeds. Okay, so it takes so half. half damage. Uh, it'll take six points of fire damage. It had six hit points hey. left. Yay! It died. It dead. Red. I get five hit points. <laughs> <laughs> It's As I, yeah, I literally just put my hands on its face and my hands just glow black. And... and it is impossible to say where the black fire begins and the black shadow ends, yep. but whatever was left of it disappears through the floor. Yeah, leaving... I'm sure we could have had the lovely conversation. And it, it, it goes away. The remaining one, the fifth one, goes for Ragna. Uh, Twelve. Nope. Nope, that's a big old miss. Um, and then the last one, everyone make a perception check. Eight. Is this something involving sight? Yes. Eighteen. Six. Eight. Eighteen. Eight. Eighteen. Okay, so eighteen, Ragna. Ragna, you uh, see the spirit that disappeared yes. into the creature and around young Ebenezer Scrooge. It is, the lie has wrapped itself around whatever the gift is. Whatever this creature is trying to give Scrooge, the creature, the lie, is embellishing it. Okay. Wonderful. I wonder. Okay. Wonderful. Top of the round. Uh, the first one's dead. The second one is dead. So that takes us to the third one, um, who is also who's going to continue to go after Ragnar. Okay. And roll a fourteen. Nope. Still a miss. Okay, great. Um, that takes us now to uh, Anvera. So there's three left in the room, and then the one that disappeared into the book. Okay. Um, I will attack. Which one? The one that is on me. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. The one that <laughs> traveled by. My bad. Yeah. You good. Uh, that is going to be a 25. Yeah, that hits. Okay. That is going to be nine damage. Okay. Um, second attack. Is going to be a uh, 19. Hits. And that is going to be 7 damage. Okay. And I'll spend key for flurry of blows. Okay. And that is going to be. Uh, sufficient. Okay. That's what a 15 plus. Seven. Cool. It's AC is fifteen. Yeah. Um, only five damage that time. Okay. And this is magical punching damage. Yep. <laughs> Sentence I really love saying seventeen to hit. Hits. And uh, an additional 
um, seven magical punching okay, damage. Okay, this thing is left with two hit points. Nice. All right. Um, so I, I pummel the crap you out of it. pummel the crap out of it, and it somehow manages to hang on to you mm-hmm. loosely, but it is still there. Right. Um, and that, uh, you're restrained, so that is the end of your turn. Mm-hmm. Alright, that takes us then to Ragnar. Ragnar, what do uh, you want to do? Am I close enough that I can get to this item? Absolutely. Rad. Yeah, I want to try. Yeah, and you and rush up to it, and, it. You, and you see, um, uh, well, it. some sort of, uh, uh, object being handed. Uh, it looks like a book. Okay. I'm assuming since this thing is sort of the, the, the lie which I can interact with is, Touching the thing. Is around the book? Therefore, yes. So um, therefore, I can maybe interact with the book. Uh, make an intelligence check. My favorite phrase that I get to say. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Fun fact, intelligence... No, it's not my worst. Wisdom's my worst. Which, I mean, makes sense. Um, base <laughs> intelligence, that's 11. 11? Um, you know you could interact with the lie. You don't know if you can grab the book or not. Okay, cool. Um, what do I want to do? Is there any other lies beyond the one that's on the book? There are th- there are three more. One is almost dead in on Anvera, and then there are two other ones. Um, but this wonder, is the one on the book that you saw. I just wonder if I can get a cool example of lightning line going, but I'm probably not. Um, yeah, I'm just going to charge the one by the book. The one by the book. All right, and uh, try to hack into it. Okay. Do oh, it is. Has played curse a thing like Hunter's Mark that I can move my person? Mm, I, don't so. I don't think so. I think once you use it, you use it's it. It's done. Yeah. I That's think fine. once you are a higher level, you get more uses of it. A higher That's warlock, I think you get more cool. uses of it. That's fine. Um, yes. I'm going to run in and uh, I'm a hack and slash. Hack and slash away. As Justin Bentoncourt puts it, I'm a hack and slash. You're going to hack and slash. All right. Hack that slash. 17. Hits. Rad. Uh, 6 slashing. 6 slashing damage. And I'm going to attack a game. That's a 19. And that is 9 slashing damage. And I'm right there. So here's what happens. As you run up to the book and uh, interpose yourself between this creature and the young Scrooge and whatever corruption it's trying to pass off, you are you cut into the lie and you are able to slash it away and it f- the lie falls away from the book and as the lie falls away from the book the scene re- slowly returns to normal mm. and the lies all disappear all right that's right run <laughs> <laughs> god damn it you see you see uh lord scrooge <laughs> Still funny. You see Lord yeah, Lord Scrooge standing next to the spirit of Candle Knight's past. He says, I've forgotten this man. This man here. And he points to the strange-looking creature. He offered to help me when I got older. Was there some price to its spirit? Did I give something up? And he turns, and the spirit is gone. And he turns and trudges his way back through the doors and back into... His bedroom. The three of you pulled along invisibly, or you know, by like the the the, the kite, the, the movie, the movie, like, yeah, the, 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 movie like, the movie moves forward. Yeah, back in the bedroom. <laughs> that whole thing happens. You're back in the bedroom. <laughs> Whoa! Magic. Uh, the three of you watch Scrooge um, pace around his room a bit. Uh, until his eyes lock with the purple book hidden amidst papers on his desk before he returns to bed. I walk with the purple book, look stay on the cover. Uh, it is simply entitled uh, The Spellbook of Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm going to say the complete works of Charles Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> I tuck in David Scrooge. Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> Second edition. All right. Um, all right. And I guess that you was one. sit and wait. All right. Uh, Carol looks at that book. Go. Uh, you have enough time here for a short rest. All right. All right. Oh, thank God. I'm gonna take advantage of that. Five, six, seven, eight. Back. 
Oh, cool. I'm back up. I am almost back up. Yeah. I sent you. I'm going to use my Pearl of Power to regain my third level spell slot. I forgot Great. you had one of those. Yeah, I think I forgot all Last Bird's Arc that I had it too. <laughs> I think so. I don't think it came up at once. You also... Do you still have an Elemental Gem or did that get spent when we <laughs> no, used it we the used first that, time? Boy. So, I've got that. Could do some weird sorcerer bullshit and then use that free spell slot to get more sorcery points. You can do that. that to is make, thing you to do. make more level one spell slots. <laughs> like, I spent two level ones at this point. Yeah, the sorcery bullshit is real. It's weird. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah, but you can do anything. You can do some weird shit. The fireplace shakes violently. Ah! Suddenly, a giant of a man with flowing red hair and an oversized chin, wrapped in hunter's leathers and a green cloak, squeezes himself down the chimney, towering above the fireplace mantle. His face cracks into a smile that seems to take up the entire room as he turns towards Scrooge's bed. Scrooge bolts upright. How did you get in here? Excellence, you're up! Come and know me better, man! Oh! I fucking love that movie, guys. I think Bilga <laughs> found her crush for this episode. The giant of a man bounds to the bed, snatches Scrooge by the hand, yanking him towards the balcony. Scrooge is ragdog along, ragdolled along <laughs> as he is dragged from the room. Come! I am the spirit of Candlemite's presence. At your service, and we are headed now to the sad home of the man in your sad employ, Bob Cratchit. The spirit speaks to Scrooge over his shoulder, but seems to look right at the three of you. Hurry along now, or you'll be left behind. All right. As he walks, the tail of his long green cloak stretches out behind him, trailing, asking to be grabbed. Uh, clearly, he jumps from the balcony grabs. and flies. Yeah, no, Ambera grabs the cloak. Ragna grabs Ambera. Bilga grabs Ragna, and we all get the flying scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, are we gonna wingman Bilga so she can bang the ghost of the Candle Knight's presence? <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole nother game I have not written. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have time yeah, for that. Screw that <laughs> plot. This is the new mission. Panicking, Scrooge cries out in alarm and holds tight to the spirit as you are flung through the night sky, dangling hither and yon, almost scraping snow off of roofs, but somehow passing straight through them. Suddenly, the spirit dives towards the street. Wind and snow blur your vision. You can barely distinguish Ebenezer crying out ahead of you, his robe and nightcap fluttering in the wind. You land with a thump. Finding yourself standing in a snowy street where you stood mere hours before. Before you is the large window to the Cratchit house. The warm glow emanating from its glass panes mark a stark contrast to the dim cold of the street. Why have you brought me here, spirit? The spirit does not respond, but merely bends down next to the window and peers inside. With an exaggerated humph, Scrooge draws closer to the glow. As he joins the spirit, the light inside dims, the glass frosts over, and it hides the scene of pure goodness from Scrooge's eyes. What's inside here? The glass is fogged. The birds hear a rumbling amidst the street. Behind you, to the sides, Draw you turn sword. to see three large skeletons rise from the earth. They're in different places, so you can't get all of them. <sighs> <laughs> Each one laboring to stand under the weight of the pack strapped to its back. As they stand to their full height, snow falls off of them, revealing large black orbs spinning on top of their packs. Each one wielding what is called mechanically a great shovel. <laughs> Let's roll initiative. Yay. All right. <laughs> Fucking love a great <gasps> shovel. Natural 20. Cool. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path, Birds of Prey. You can find our network and our Patreon at ghostlightmedia.net and all of us on Twitter. Zach at that guy, Zach Rob, Griffin at Griffgold, Chase at TQ Loudly, and myself at Ryan underscore Albrecht. 
A special thanks goes out, as always, to Nathan N. for his continued support. We have one more episode already in the can for Birds of Prey 3, which should finish out the arc, and we'll let you know what happens to Lord Ebenezer Scrooge and the town of Linden. But for now, we'll be back in two weeks with a return to our main storyline as the Decimators deal with the grand revelations from Vice 2. Portions of this adventure were taken from A Christmas Carol Adventure by Verge Games. Check them out on Kickstarter. Thanks for listening, and don't forget that The Muppet Christmas Carol is the best Christmas movie.